Uh, but Patrick Wood, I was familiar with his writings and work from newswithviews.com and other places, but I heard him for an hour on Dr. Stan Monteith a few nights ago, and uh, I've read The Technotronic Age. I've read uh, The Anglo-American Establishment. I've read Quigley's books. I've read Brzezinski's books. I, I've, I read Council on Foreign Relations publications. And so I, I knew everything he was saying was accurate, but he knew stuff I didn't know, and I went and looked it up, and it was accurate. So I wanted to get him on because... Um, he is an editor of a weekly financial analysis service, Findings and Forecast. Uh, he has studied elite globalization policies, which you need to do to understand economics, since the late 70s when he partnered with the late Anthony C. Sutton, who was a listener and been on the show, to co-author Trilaterals Over Washington, Volumes 1 and 2. He remains a leading expert on the elitist Trilateral Commission, their policies and achievements in creating their self-proclaimed new international economic order. He is also a leading expert on historic and modern technocracy, which plays a prominent role in current world affairs. That says it uh, uh, you know, lightly. A an economist by education, a financial analyst and writer by profession, an American constitutionalist by choice, Wood holds a biblical worldview. He has a deep historical insight into the modern attacks on sovereignty, property rights, and personal freedom. Such attacks are the epitome. Uh, and uh, by the implementation of UN policies, such as Gen 21, sustainable development, smart growth, and in education, the widespread adoption of Common Core, 2 plus 2 equals 5. His current research builds on trilateral commission hegemony involving transhumanism, technocracy, and more, and how these are co opting economics politics and religion, which together represent the major pillars of society. Yes, they're taking over all sciences, philosophies, and re-engineering them. And I appreciate him coming on. We're going to skip this network break because I'm behind. This is such important intelligence. So stations shouldn't be skipping this break. It's a network break. We're going to do this because it's, it's, it's time is important. Uh, Augustforecast.com is his site, and he will be here frequently. There's so many amazing minds out there that we just... You know, you just, you just tend to forget in our rush. And Anthony Sutton, of course, advised Congress, discovered all the documents at the Ford Foundation and others with Patrick Wood. He was a top congressional advisor on the plan to convert America to a tyranny. How our government funded Stalin, Lenin before him, Hitler. Uh, didn't, didn't run them or control them, built them, just like Saddam and Al-Qaeda and all of it. And, and to understand the scientific tyranny, the application of dehumanization, we give you probably one of the greatest living experts. Because I went and looked into him. I'd seen his writings. I was like, I forgot about Patrick Wood. Why has he never been on the show? He might have been on. I might have forgot. But I don't believe he's ever been with us. And, and it's just so important. A treasure trove. The reason I'm building this up is you need to understand this is your world. This is how it really runs. These are the guys that in Congress got the documents and went to the Canadian archives and got the intel to, to put out the intel and to post the documents on their websites. Uh, I had Sutton on about 17 years ago, and then I got, tried to get him on a few years later, and he said, I'm sorry, I'm too ill, but I appreciate your work. And then he died like a week later. I couldn't believe he was like on his deathbed and was sending me emails back. So I just really admire his work as well. And we need to remember these men that have fought so hard. Mr. Wood, I, I know it's probably annoying having me gush over you, but your intel is so vital to the preservation of human dignity. Well, thank you, Alex. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to get some of this information out. Uh, I've been trying hard, as you know, and uh, I always enjoy uh, doing uh, radio and TV interviews whenever I can. Well, let's do this. Let's say you're talking to a new audience. If you had five minutes on national TV, which this basically is now, three million people right now conservatively watching and listening, how would you introduce it to laymen? Because my listeners are very smart, very informed, but they always want to give stuff to their family. And so they want it crystallized. Give us the basic overview and then get into the nuts and bolts of technocracy. Well, it's really a, it's a you know, it's a complex and a deep topic. But basically, the first idea is this. The problems we've been having in the last 35 to 40 years, especially, have been economic in nature rather than political. And there's a lot of emphasis in the public, uh, like in the Tea Parties, and the conservative movement, and even in liberal circles as well that the world uh, revolves around politics, uh, that is uh, arguing in Congress and uh, you know fighting with the executive branch and so on. And, and um, my studies on the Trilateral Commission have pretty much pointed out, what I think with great detail, that 
the takeover of America has been economic in nature. And that was the nature originally of the Trilateral Commission that was formed in 1973 by David Rockefeller and Zbigniew Brzezinski. They, they said frequently that they were going to create a new international economic order. That, that They used that in every uh, one of their early publications. Uh, we didn't really know at the time exactly what that would look like, but we had a pretty good idea from reading the policies. And uh, they have managed over a period of now, since 1973, some 35 plus years, to create this new international economic order. And if we look around, this is what we see today, Alex. This is what's important to realize. Back then, people criticized us for being conspiracy nuts. Today, we have the force of history behind us, which after a 25-year period, of course, becomes history. We can now look back at history and see that what we said in, set in the 1970s was exactly right. This is exactly what they've done. We know that the, the world system today is broken, uh, almost beyond repair. And uh, we have to put we have to put the finger where the finger belongs, and it belongs with these this this re very small elite group of internationalists that were represented by the members of the Trilateral Commission back in 1973, and ever since I might add, and they have influenced our government, our the executive branch of our government, especially they have influenced our government uh, to an extreme that has literally excluded the American people altogether. We have no control over Congress anymore, it appears. And the executive branch is just gonna do what it wants to do. So there's been a fundamental change in the political system in our country for sure, but the political system was really just useful idiots for this elite group of e economy changers, if you will. They had to use the political system to get what they wanted to do economically over these last years. And so we see we see things like the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, CAFTA, we say that we see the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership being negotiated right now that that is hopefully not going to get put through on fast track, but the administration is trying to get fast track authority established again. Um, so, you know, this this hegemony has has c continued from 1973 to today, hasn't let up. Nobody has identified these people behind the scenes. Nobody has, uh, even politicians will not re write about them or, or speak about them. Uh, in fact, I think the only living politi or politician, living or dead, that I know that ever talked about the Trilateral Commission was Barry Goldwater when he wrote his, uh, his memoirs uh, with no apology back in 1979. Um, so this group was not talked about. These people are not talked about. We've been writing about them since 19, uh, well, 1977, really. And uh, nothing has changed. The, 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 you know, they're doing the same thing today they did back then. I, I don't know how else I could summarize it in a very short period of time, Alex. Well, you've done a great job. In fact, I'm going to pull up the uh, Barry Goldwater quote uh, with no apologies where he describes how it's an economic takeover. We're designed to fight a Stalin a Hitler, a Mao, we see a foreign enemy. But when it's corporate and regulatory and incremental, and it creates a global group of less than 100 corporations in Rockefeller's own words, uh, and he's written New York Times articles bragging about it, uh, how they want centralized control and how they divide up the world. U.S.-based companies get the toll roads in Spain. Spain gets the toll roads over here. Uh, it, it, it's where they divide up the world amongst themselves, and then bring in a technocracy to be able to control the population scientifically where it's impossible to ever get out of it or even know what you're in and you dumb down the population. So I wanna walk down, walk through what technocracy and the technotronic age is, what they're doing with it. Cause I mean, as best I understand it, it is the, it is the uh, Cecil Rhodes plan of 1900 and the, and the British royalty and their empire that was in trouble. They said, we'll go corporate, take down our flag, but use corporate energy to still control uh, these holdings that we once had, like India and other places. And at the same time, we'll export this corporate plan and, 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 and team up with other robber barons in the United States and Europe. That's what Bilderberg later became. But their philosophy comes out of eugenics and, and Malthus and Galton. And so it's, it's basically eugenics scientifically deployed through a world government corporate 
system so it's very hard to fight i want to get your take on that in a moment but we did find the quote from no apologies uh with barry goldwater he says quote the trilateral commission is an international is international again the trilateral commission is international and is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interest by seizing control of the political government of the united states the trilateral commission represents a skillful coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power political monetary intellectual and ecclesiastical the churches from no apologies now let, let me break this down for folks and give you the floor America was pretty much the sole superpower by uh, the end of World War II. So the globalists had to create a fake bipolar world by giving weapons to the Soviets to then build them up to let us become a tyranny and then share in a backdoor globalist deal taking over different areas of the world in the name of fighting each other in full spectrum dominance. Then they ended that farce and then moved on to the new Al-Qaeda threat, which they actually ran, to use that to take our liberty. So I'm basically describing the main trait of technocracy is that it's totally amoral, except for the eugenics-based system, that it doesn't even, it, it uses everything, as Carl quickly said, socialism, fascism, communism, as long as it's command and control. Go ahead, sir. Well, the book, uh, the book Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, um, we refer to it in, in, in pretty much everywhere. People talk about, oh, it's a brave new world. Uh, that book was written in 1932, Alex, and um, it was written by Aldous Huxley looking straight into the face of, te of technocracy that was a big movement back then. I didn't discover the technocracy movement from the 1930s until a few years ago. And when I did, it piqued my interest so much, I had to investigate and, and just, you know, go crazy looking for information to try and find out what they're all about. It was a it was a huge movement back in those days, had a big popularity, a large popularity in Canada and especially in the West, although it did pretty well in the East as well. But these these technocrats uh, specified very carefully what they would do if they could replace capitalism. They believed in the Great Depression that capitalism was dead. Unemployment lines were, you know, wrapping around blocks. Soup kitchens were, you know, full, just serving people all day long. And uh, they believed that, the, that they could provide an economic system that would be better than capitalism. It didn't get very far. It kind of died out uh, as a movement around 1938 to 40. But uh, today, it's it's had a resurgence, if you will. Sure, it's been adopted as the globalist management program. It has now been adopted by the globalist management program. And the reason I say this is important, when we follow the money, back in the 1930s, the Rockefeller Carnegie crowd were dumping buckets of money onto the eugenics movement. Uh, this is well known and well documented. They did not dump any money on the technocracy movement back then. And so the technocracy movement kind of withered and died after a period of time. However, when Zbigniew Brzezinski resuscitated those ideas in 1970 with his book called Between Two Ages, America's Role in the Technotronic Era, that apparently caught Rockefeller's eye. That's right. Patrick Woods, stay there. We'll explain who David Rockefeller is, Zbigniew Brzezinski, and more. These two men, you can say more than anybody now, literally govern our civilization. We'll be right back. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. back to our guest and I'm really gonna try to give him the floor to break down the history of this but you hear me start almost hyperventilating when he's talking about it because I've done the research I know it's true I watch David Rockefeller on C-SPAN 50 something times I read their publications I know out of over 70 globalist organizations set up since the 30s he set up almost all of them or his dad did and he's like the omni budsman of, of just all of the merger, the whole plan. And then he adopted technocracy, and that's the cameras, that's the systems, that's the to apply that to eugenics. And, and, and if you wonder why New York Times endorses it and why all these elites endorse it, 
the the Venus Project and and its founder is part of the technocracy movement. This is you live in a giant plastic concentration camp, basically, with with a computer programmed by the elite, the uh, the megapolis controlling your life. I mean, I could not think of a more horrible fate. But we're going to go back to our guests in a moment. Here's an example of technocracy. Okay, bureaucracy as a science of control. And notice the the, the elites, the central bankers, in the last few years have been calling themselves. And then at Davos, they go, we're technocrats. <clears throat> That's a bureaucrat with 1984 spy grids who has a eugenics philosophy. But briefly, look at this. Harvard study confirms Florida reduces children's IQ. Out of 20-plus studies conducted, excuse me, 27 studies. I always say 24 for some reason. 27 studies over 24, 22 years, scientifically reviewed by uh, Harvard Medical School and their top researchers, and the National Research Council, this is not some side group, they said, take fluoride out as a pesticide, take it out of the water. It is giving us massive cancer and dumbing us down. It is, you might as well have a chemical weapon. It is a chemical weapon. The Nazis got it from the Russians to put it in the water. That's a Nuremberg trial. Now, it's in the halogen family. It's the bad halogen. What is the good halogen that blocks it and removes it? Iodine. But iodine, if it's not the right type, can be toxic. That's why we produced the nascent iodine, the only proprietary type that's in the unbound base with the organic vegetable glycerin from Germany. Made in America, but the corn's from Germany. The only place you can get organic corn to make the glycerin. Very expensive. The point is, this is what I take. It's incredible. And yes, I fund my operation with this with good products. But that's an example of technocracy. Oh, the government before it was like this in the 20s said, oh, we, we were having all this retardation and problems. Put it in the salt. Oh, IQs go up 15%. Here's that study. Business Insider reports on it. You see, that's technocracy. Oh, let's take it out and put the bad thing in. Then everybody will behave themselves well. This product is available at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And again, this is why the people perish for lack of knowledge. Something so simple like that and look even if you don't want to get our high quality nation iodine at infowarsstore.com to support the broadcast or infowarslife.com the the gourmet salts from the himalayas and other areas we've had medical doctors on to break it down they don't sell it i ought to be selling it because we got to fund ourselves gourmet salts have it you, you definitely folks gourmet salt i just whatever you do please please research this InfoWarsLife.com has videos on it and more to explain it to you. Okay, now I'm going to shut up. It's only got him for like 25 minutes. Then we've got uh, the former top secret service agent coming on who made national headlines last week with our story from InfoWars.com on DrudgeReport.com where he said, look, it's worse than you know, but he wouldn't go further than that. I've talked to other secret service that say it's unbelievable. We can't tell you. Well, I'm going to see what I can squeeze out of him coming up uh, at the start of the next hour. But going back to Patrick Wood, Publisher, he's an economist, uh, renowned, exposed the trilaterals, co-wrote the book Trilaterals Over Washington with the icon Anthony C. Sutton, who blew Skull and Bones wide open with Charlotte Iserby. Uh, he joins us. Okay, so get into, we got up to Brzezinski, who he is, who David Rockefeller is. Tell us, explain technocracy, and then what's happening in our world. Americans don't ought to like communism. Well, explain what technocracy is. Communism by the elite, by another name, with them offshore exempt from it. Patrick Wood, break it down. Well, when I discovered technocracy as a historical study a few years ago, it really piqued my interest. And I said I had to go and research it uh, in depth. And I, I made some, you know, several trips to uh, secure original research uh, on technocracy. I found out that it had been skipped in the history books primarily because at the time in the 30s, Randolph Hearst got so hacked off by being used by these people that he sent a memo out to all of his newspapers around the country and told them, uh, basically, if you ever mention the word technocracy again, you are fired. And so there was no more articles on technocracy after that time, really. And so it was a little difficult going back and getting this information. But after I studied it enough, it really occurred to me that I needed to go back and read Zbigniew Brzezinski's book again in light of technocracy. And what I found out was, Alex, is that his writings lined up philosophically and, you know, idea for idea sort of thing 
with the doctrine and dogma that was presented in the 1930s. It was very radical back then. In fact, one prominent technocrat wrote a book, a public book, suggesting that President Roosevelt should, could, should declare himself dictator after his election so that he could implement technocracy back then. We can be thankful that he didn't take him up on that, but uh, life might be different today. Yeah. But when I read, went back and read Bozinski, uh again, I was shocked to realize that he was basically saying the same thing. And here's what's kind of ironic or strange. Brzezinski was at Columbia University at the time. Well, in 1932, technocracy as a movement was also housed in Columbia University. Even though the movement got kicked out, all of the professors that were part of it stayed on at Columbia. Most, many of them died there in their positions, you know, retired and, and passed. And so here's Brzezinski picking up the trail at the same university where it left off basically spouting the same dogma. One phrase in particular from his book, one quote, I'd like to read it just because it will just stand your hair on end that Brzezinski understood this, but even back in 68 to 70. And I'll have to be the first to admit, Brzezinski was a brilliant man. I don't agree with him on anything he really did or said or wrote, but you have to give him credit for being a brilliant guy he foresaw the future back then. Of course, they went and made, manufactured the future after that. But here's what he wrote. The technotronic era, and that technotronic, by the way, is a knockoff for the word technocratic. So he quote, again, the technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values, Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date, complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities, close quote. Now, I remember that book being on the bookshelf when I was a small child, and by the time I was 10 and was able to read good, I tried to read it and didn't understand it. But I sat around the kitchen table hearing all this from my father growing up, and that's the Internet. That's all of it. It was all built and designed to be this grid. So they've built a society to control us, and that's the nanny state. That's the close the green belt for no reason and control people, set up checkpoints, tell your kids they can't play tag, say the state rules your kids. This is putting a grid in the name of keeping us safe in that's actually a grid of tyranny and control. Well, the, it's interesting that the, the, the documents from the early 1930s specified what needed to take place in order for technocracy to survive or to, to be uh, you know, in, uh, implanted. One of the things, uh, because technocracy was energy-based, one of the main tenets of their philosophy was that the price-based economic system was going to be discarded, that was capitalism, of course, and it was going to be substituted by a system of energy credits or energy currency that would be used to uh, monitor all exchange of goods and services in the economy. And a carbon-based currency, we haven't seen that, of course, quite yet, but we see the push for carbon-based everything around the world. This is what sustainable development's about. This is what everything green is about. This is what uh, Agenda 21 is about. Uh, you get the idea. It's everywhere today. And in fact, there there are actually articles out in the last five years that are that are, that are openly discussing carbon currency, but it's really in kind of a, still in, in, a, in a minor That's mode. That's right. And in England, they show the school kids a cartoon called Megaopolis, where the computer tells you when you can go outside, it tells you when you can eat. Everyone has their job in the technocracy. Uh, you're only allowed to have one child. This is the plan. So for folks out there, it's fun to know about football and what size, you, you know, jock strap your favorite sports person wears for whatever reason. I'm being sarcastic. But, but that doesn't matter. That's a diversion. You read these books written in the 1930s by Aldous Huxley, whose brother was a eugenicist and went on to found the transhumanist movement and head up the UN. 
UNESCO program and Agenda 21 and all of it that came out of the uh, a meeting in uh, 92, you really see it's all the same control freak scientific dictatorship system under different names. It's just that the brilliantly evil Brzezinski, uh, who believes in things beyond good and evil, foresaw the gestalt and got the real world manager, David Rockefeller, behind it. Because David Rockefeller, if you had to say one guy's king of the world, you'd have to say it was David Rockefeller. Not so much now, but he was the prime mover working 18 hours a day to bring this world government in. And now his people are in place everywhere. And he chose the Brzezinski model on record, and then he integrated it with eco-science eugenesis model, the injections and the additives to dumb us down. It's all White House science are on record. And you realize this is their military battle plan assaulting us and they think we're so dumb that we wouldn't get this and warn people and the elites comments to me when i've talked to some of the high level people and i mean head of the kissinger group on record and others off record is alex the public can't even understand you you're one of us even if you don't know it and you're going to grow up and see that i'm going to grow up and see that and block development in the third world when that would actually reduce their population what you claim you want I've got to see that when you're busy funding Al-Qaeda to then blow stuff up to take my rights. The point is they claim it's all scientific for the better good. At the bottom of it is really an authoritarian lust for dehumanization. And I, and I want you to continue with your presentation and all these slides you sent us for the TV viewers. But uh, continuing to get into their plan, studying them and working with uh, Sutton on their larger plan, what, what would you say their real philosophy was? I mean, in, in just 10 words or less, I mean, what is it? Neo-feudalist, uh, just haters of humanity, control freaks? Who are these people? Well, they're driven by money. They're driven by a lust for money. They sought to create a new international economic order in 1973. I don't really think that game plan has changed. Uh, it's still an economic issue. It's still about profits. Uh, it's still about manipulation of the markets for their good. Um, they would press out competition, and they have pressed out competition over the decades. Um, so it's still, they're still looking to make as much money as they can. They have little regard for the amount of money that you and I might make. In fact, the original model of technocracy from the 30s did away with private property altogether. We see this thing picked up in Agenda 21 documents, by the way, that private property is out. And well, sure, they want a post-industrial world. They want to make us poor, in their own words, uh, as a tool of control. Well, essentially, what they want is just all of our production, Alex. And, you know, if you go back to the feudal world, uh, the Dark Ages, it was very dark. And you look at people back then, they were mostly farmers, agrarian, but they were productive. They were able to grow things, and the land yielded stuff. It's just that the, the lords of the land took 90% of everything that uh, that they grew or the you know that they the animals they bred they were they were not allowed to keep anything except for just uh, you know what they needed to to stay alive and this is kind of where we're going they're still looking at getting the the output of our hands if you will the output of our production but they want it for themselves they don't want to share it back with us so even in the end that's still a very economic uh oriented uh, You're right, you know, and they used our energy to build their little castles in the sky for their power trip, so it, it, it's robbing our destiny. Continue with your presentation. That's exactly right. So, Brzezinski wrote in 1970, again, at Between Two Ages, he, and I quote this, he said, the nation state as a fundamental unit of man's organized life has ceased to be the principal creative force. International banks and multinational corporations are acting and planning in terms that are far in advance of the political concept of the nation state. Close quote. That says a mouthful, but this also has not changed. This philosophy of this elite group has not changed since Brzezinski wrote that in 1970. And they believe that the nation state is basically just not compatible with reality, and they are acting as if it did not exist. Um, so as they move, move forward in the world, and in China, in Europe, and of course in other, you know, India and other minor countries, and especially in North America, as they have moved forward, we can see their fingerprints and their footprints 
all over the economic scene, and they have used the polit or co-opted the political mechanisms to achieve their new, you know, their new economic order pipe dream. Well, that's right. Instead of an economy based on whoever has the best innovations, who's the most honorable, it becomes who is the technocrats, who is in control. And then they're tax exempt under globalism and have diplomatic immunity. And we are just crushed by total surveillance, uh, which is their plan. You know, I would uh, uh, you're old enough to remember some of the old green, green, <clears throat> green people from maybe the 60s and 70s oh, yeah. with their long hair and so on. If you can find a green or one of those original green people today and talk to them about the current state of the green movement, you'll see them spitting molten nails because they believe that their movement was taken over by these people, the Rockefeller crowd and so on. They were uh, given a lot of money. Then they were told after they had the money, well, you're not managing right. We need to send in our managers to manage your organization. And basically, the whole green movement got hijacked by this group and now has been turned on us, uh, of course, showered with money. But it has been turned on us to bring this green agenda to bring in an energy based society. And as an economic system, I can't stress that enough because that's what smart grid is all about, for instance. That's what cap and trade is all about, for instance. That's what global warming is all about, for instance, with, with Al Gore, <coughs> excuse me, being on the front of every publication almost that has anything to do with global warming. Al Gore is a member of the Trilateral Commission, still is. That's right. Stay there. We're going to come back with our guest to break this down. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. You can follow us on Twitter. You can check out Patrick Wood's site, AugustForecast.com. Renowned author and expert Joel Skousen breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night. And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are gonna be crowded, they're gonna run out of gasoline, they're gonna run out of food, and then they're gonna to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters, the health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. My personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall. Because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time. Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones. Here's an example of how the propaganda is 24-7. I was in the coffee room this morning watching MSNBC monitoring uh, state-run media, and they were promoting the end of the earth because of the, tor the hurricane or the uh, typhoon that hit the Philippines and saying Al Gore was right. We've got to do the carbon taxes. That will save it. Uh, and then just now during the break on CNN, they're worshiping Ted Turner and his far reaching impact was the headline and how he is uh, saving the earth. I mean, it's just never ending. Let us run the world. We're saving you. And then meanwhile, Ted Turner, David Rockefeller, all of them are on record supporting 
an 80 plus percent population reduction. We're joined by Patrick Wood. He sent us amazing documents today. If you're a TV viewer, we've been putting these uh, uh, documents and documentation and quotes up on screen. We've got until five after next hour. Then we've got uh, the famous Secret Service agent joining us with Inside Intel. Uh, but Patrick, in the time we've got left in this segment and the next, and I want to have you back very soon, um, get into uh, their philosophy, eugenics, how it ties into the older globalist plans and all the other key points that people need to know about technocracy, the system that we're going under right now. Well, we, we haven't really broached the subject of... Um uh, of transhumanism, and I, I don't know that we have time to do that. But we'll start getting into the, it. The Rockefeller crowd back in the 30s, uh, the, well, the 1920s and 30s, poured a lot of money into uh, the eugenics uh, movement, and it was a very big movement back then. It's kind of been buried, uh, especially buried since World War II with with uh, uh, with Nazi Germany's experience with eugenics kind of been a taboo topic and hasn't been discussed much. But, yeah, they call it implementation by stealth. That's their official policy. Well, it, it is now, for sure. And back then, though, since there wasn't a lot of money poured on it, on top of technocracy uh, incorporated, uh, uh, eugenics was not really part of their agenda, not directly in any case. Some of their members were, were obviously influenced by the genetics, uh, by the eugenics movement back then, but that was not really an official part of their uh, platform, if you will. Um, they were very economic in nature. They were, they were focused on creating an economy that would be balanced, that would be free of poverty. Exactly, but David Rockefeller wants to use it to carry out eugenics. He wants a computerized, weaponized system to dehumanize. Well, yes, we can, we can see the dovetail uh, in modern times where where eugenics is an, is, is an undercurrent that's starting to, you know, kind of come back to the surface in this. Transhumanism really brings this out. Transhumanism and technocracy are like Siamese twins joined at the hip, if you will. They're both based on scientism, the philosophy of scientism. And transhumanism basically sets up a society of the haves and the have-nots, again, based on genetic modification. And so those who were genetically enhanced, if you will, will be the haves and the, the rest of the people who are not genetically enhanced. Maybe they won't be as smart. Maybe they won't be as strong or athletic or whatever. They will be the have nots and, you know, basically will end up with the eugenic system that can be controlled by push button uh, rather than by edict as it was during Nazi Germany. <laughs> and then people will beg to be enslaved by the new genetic modifications in the toxic environment when it's really a Trojan horse back door of control. That's how they always sell it. Uh, absolutely on target with your research. And of course, as you said, Huxley was one of these uh, transhumanists before it even had the term. And his brother founded that movement when eugenics was given a bad name on record. We're gonna come back in 60 seconds, give you five more minutes to get into other tidbits. We'll definitely have to have you back in the near future. Third hour coming up, InfoWars.com. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. InfoWars.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> InfoWars.com. Yeah. <laughs> segment with the man that heads up augustforecast.com the amazing patrick wood and i tell you next time i'm out of town because then it, it just excites me so much i won't shut up but i'm adding important info uh and like david knight does the show he's a smart engineer knows about this stuff you ought to have wood on for like two hours so the next time i'm out of town or the next time i'm not doing the show and i have knight doing it i want to get wood on for two hours Patrick, what have we not covered today that people need to know about? I think it's important that suddenly the globalist, the new term they use is technocrat. I mean, they're really trying to make that sexy. And, you know, it's not surveillance that they watch everything we do. They're watching it to make the economy better. But really, they're just giving it to the insiders. Well, you know, the, the, the spooky thing is, let, let me read you two of the official requirements from the 1932 document called Technocracy Study Course. That was their, kind of their Bible of the day. One said, quote, 
provide a specific registration of the type, kind, et cetera, of all goods and services where produced and where used. The next one says, provide specific registration of the consumption of each individual plus a record and description of the individual. And Alex, this is exactly what the total surveillance society is doing to us right now. They're collecting all of the financial records as well as any other profile or psychographic information they can get so they can slice us and dice us economically, if you will, and put us in, you know, maybe pigeonhole us politically as well. You know, there are threats to their system, but this is an economic movement to try and extract the maximum amount possible from individual consumers. It's very consumer centric, but everything is focused on collecting this information to, to make this system work. This is the last piece, according to the original documents of technocracy, that needs to be put in place before technocracy can actually be enforced. And that's why I'm really concerned today about this total awareness society business because when they get this in place completely, somewhere in knowledge is power, of course, there's going to come a time when they can flip the switch and basically say, we're now in control, and now you will do what we say. That's right. It's a total military takeover. The smart meters controlling how hot or cold our house is. The satellites not letting us cut a tiny tree in our backyard. Just absolute bureaucratic hell. And then the, the robots get rid of the regular jobs and the farming so literally, like a Kurt Vonnegut book, their plan is to have a third of the population as enforcers, and they're going to hire the people they poisoned through the eugenics operation to literally rule over those of us that are informed. So it's not even the eugenics that they've claimed they're building. If somebody wanted really to feed the world, what they need, to, what we need to do is increase the CO2 content in the atmosphere by 10%. That's right. It would feed the world in a heartbeat. But when you take CO2 out, plants can't grow. Crops can't prop, can't thrive, and people starve. I well, see, see, I would endorse a real open market, free, uh, open source technocracy that empowered and had us go to Alpha Centauri's. But this, th th this, this technocracy is a bunch of bean counting communists adopted by robber baron eugenicists that openly are using it as a weapon system. And so we've got to point out technocracy is what's delivering the poverty. It's the enemy. It is the enemy, and the people who have brought us technocracy are the enemy as well. I wouldn't really lay the blame necessarily at the feet of congressmen and senators, but, uh, you know, because they've mostly been useful idiots and not really knowing what they're doing. But uh, if we look behind it to these people who have brought us technocracy, this is where the trouble is. And if we don't get rid of those people and get them out of our government system and get them off our back, they will not be stopped and we will never be satisfied you know how much water can you squeeze out of a sponge this is what they're doing to us and the only way to get more water out of the sponge is to wring it harder and that's harder. right that's the plan patrick wood august forecast.com we're going to be talking to you soon folks can find your great work right there thank you so much sir thank you Alex. now you can watch the infowars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.